Welcome to a demonstration of IronCAD Smart Assembly capabilities. This is a technical demonstration to basically show the capabilities of the Smart Assembly, how to create it, and how to use those with parameters and design variations. The end result is basically to allow you to understand this capability and present it to customers during demonstrations or during existing customers, how they can leverage it to build their own custom catalog of configurable parts. The concept behind the Smart Assembly is really to allow users that are technical to build these catalog components and allow them to give it to other users in the organization that may not be uh, technical or understand how components go together. And once they have a catalog of the Smart Assembly, they can simply drag and drop the components out and they will automatically size and position to build the geometry to where the sales representative can go to a client and build right on the client's site the geometry that they're looking for and move the process along by being able to build the model, present it to the customer, agree on the, co the, the concept and take it back and either process it or you know, send it off to design to do some final work to it and basically speed up the full process of the design. In this demonstration, I'll really talk about all these key concepts and how they work and how to make sure you understand how they work. And to do that, I'm going to use a simple piping example that has three components. We have our starting component that's going to have design variations on it, and we have a bend component and another pipe that will be used just for sizing and, and lengthening the pipe. <clears throat> our parameters on these components are already built. For example, this pipe, if I look at the parameter table, it has two part level parameters that drive the actual sketch geometry below it, which is the pipe outer diameter and inner diameter. We also have an elbow that has parameters that does the same thing, has bend, out, bend outer diameter and inner diameter that drive components of, inside of here. Now in this example, it's critical to understand what level your parameters are at. For example, these are at the part level, and this will come into play later in this demonstration. To create smart assemblies, they're basically built off of attachment points. And to create those, you select your geometry and go to your tools catalog and your operations, you'll find an option for smart assembly. You'll also find it under your menu, under shape, attachment point, and I also build a hotkey for my example, which is really just the Alt A. So I can select my part, hit Alt A, oops, hit Alt A. <laughs> on key, Alt A, and place our smart assembly. Now the attachment point. Our attachment point has intelligence. Notice if I place on a center point, it actually builds what we call a lock relationship to the center point's face, near face. Or if you draw on a square face or a planar face, it will lock to those faces. What that means is if I change my geometry, notice the attachment point is maintaining to that face. However, this is not a rigid constraint, meaning I can select my attachment point, turn the tri ball on, and move it. For example, I want to create an offset distance so that if maybe I have an attachment point that comes into this geometry and insets inside the geometry, or I can move it outside, it doesn't matter. But basically, it still maintains its lock relationship to the face. Notice if I move it out, the attachment point still maintains that distance that I set up. So it gives you a little flexibility to build really complex relationships with these attachment points. But in our example, it's going to be on the outer face. Okay? Now, how attachment works, they work on a basically what we call a naming convention. Okay, the first thing is to really have a common name, it's going to be your connector name, and a pairing type. There's two types of pairing types. One is a male and female connection, and one is a, what we call a neutral connection, which is N. The difference between the two, an N will always connect to any other N. As long as the names are the same, it can always connect. A male and female are specific, so that only a male can connect to a female connector. And let's go ahead and talk about that concept, since it's the, the tricky one out of the two. So we'll make, <coughs> create this one as our male connector. And if we come on to our other component and create an attachment point as well, and we'll create a name for it, which is going to be the same name, pipe, underscore, in this case, we'll call it female. If we put this guy into our catalog and drag and drop him out, notice it automatically positions based on the male and female. And how it positions itself, if you look at the attachment point, there's a little axis and a long axis. The little axis will be aligned with the other parts little axis, which is the x-axis, the long axis will be anti-aligned. So this one's pointing out, this one's pointing out, notice it reversed itself as anti-aligned when they attach. Okay. So we can build these pairing connections. If you notice if I put this one instead of a female, if I made it a male connection, put that into the catalog, and drag and drop it out, notice it doesn't connect because it's looking for a female connector, not a male connector. So this is what we want for our example, because we want this pipe to only connect to the elbow pieces and not our main connector point. Okay, so 
we can go ahead and add attachment points to all our objects by simply just going through the process, creating an attachment point. So in case we want to create one on this face, on this face, select our component up here. We have another one that's going to be on this back side and our other one on the front. Okay, so we can quickly create the attachment points. And you can create the attachment points in this process. You can also use the tri ball to create attachment points. If you turn it on, it has an option to create attachment points where the tri ball is placed. So many uh, capabilities of creating these attachment points. And now that we know how to do the positioning, we also want it to size. So in this case, notice we had the, the bend uh, diameter inside of here, sorry, the pipe diameter. We want to set that so that the elbow will equal the diameter of the pipe. Okay. How you set expressions inside of here is you simply put a bracket, sorry, not a bracket, a parenthesis, semi, or sorry, colon inside of here, so parenthesis, semicolon, and what you're going to do is put the dropping parts parameter and equals to the current parts parameter. Okay, that's the actual syntax that's going to be used. So in our case, our dropping part is going to be the elbow, which has a bend outer diameter, and we want to set it to the current part, which is the pipe outer diameter. If you want to set multiple expressions inside of here, in our case we want to do an inner diameter as well, you separate these by a comma, so you can actually now do the bend inner diameter, and it's going to be equal to the pipe's inner diameter. Okay, So that's our expression that we want to use inside of here. Okay, So how that works is now if we come in here, take our pipe, Actually, we have to give this a name on this. This will give this a pipe underscore female. Copy that. Put that on our other end as well. Delete that attachment. Put it on the end here. There we go. Okay. So we have a female connection there. If we now put that guy in the catalog, drag and drop them out. Notice heel position and size. It's kind of hard to show there. Let's go ahead and make it a different size part. So we'll change our design variation to a bit bigger size. Now that we drop the same elbow out, notice it positioned and it grew its size to match that diameter. Okay, simply using the parameters between there. So how I, what I mentioned about the parameters before, how this works is notice it's looking. This is a part to part. Smart, smart assembly connection type, so you have to have part parameters to connect these attachment points. So at the part level, it reads these parameters at the part level and will apply to the part level of the elbow. So it's critical to know that, that it will not drill down into the parameters below it to retrieve or apply those. It has to be at the same level. Okay, so that's one of the key concepts of those parameters. Okay. So now that we have this expression, let's go ahead and copy that because we're going to use that on the other end of our pipe. We're also going to use it on our pipe up at the top. And for our other piece, it's going to be the exact opposite. Instead of the bend being the first after the parenthesis colon, it's going to be the pipe, because the pipe's going to be the dropping part, and its outer diameter is going to be equal to the bend's outer diameter. And we're going to do the both sides again, so it's again, it's going to be the pipe inner diameter equal to the pipe or to the bend's inner diameter. And once again we're going to reuse this. So we'll copy that, paste it to the other one, and we should now have all our parameters and expressions set up. Now we can go to our catalog. Let's go ahead and just clear what we have in there now. And we're going to drop our three components. One is our starting piece, our elbow, and then our last pipe. And let's go ahead and just delete these from the scene so we can see this work. So now the, the concept here is the user will drop our main pipe, which has design variations where they can specify what size they want. Let's just do it on a medium pipe. So we'll hit apply, hit OK, and you'll see that it automatically drops and places itself in the scene at the exact size that we want. We can size it to whatever size we want. And then we can just drag our next component. And it automatically sizes and positions. We can drive our connectors to that, and it will automatically connect the component on. And then again, we can size and adjust this and continue to drop these components on. 
Okay, we don't have to build multiple catalogs of different size or different angles of these elbows, just one, and it can automatically size and position it itself. And if you build your intelligence smart enough to where the attachment point is at a good location on drop, notice I can simply just turn my tri ball on, and I can rotate this around to give me more flexibility in the positioning inside of here. So maybe I want it to go up now. I can drag and drop my connector out. It will position and go up. Again, every time I drop this, I can just turn the tri ball on to change these directions. Now, one key concept about the attachment points is if you go to Tools Options, you'll have your Smart Assembly capability turned on. There's also another option called Reposition and Constraint Anchor. Now, I didn't have this on before, but let me go ahead and turn it on. This won't change anything that's currently in the scene. It will change what happens when you create new attachment points or new, sorry, new uh, connections, Smart Assembly connections. If I go ahead and look at my geometry, notice if I change something previous in the history, notice none of this changes. All of it is left in place intact where it was. That's because we didn't have that option on. Now that I have the option on, if we recreate that component with the connector piece and an elbow, and let's drop another connector piece on here just to show an example. Now if I change this with that option on, notice it will maintain that relationship. Everything pass this component on, it will maintain those. As long as you don't go to these components and change, you know, turn the tri ball on this part and move it off of it, you can rotate about it, but you can't move it off of there. It will maintain those relationships for you. So it's a, it's a pretty smart, intelligent connection, but not rigid. So it can actually easily be broken. You can also use things like uh, the stretch capability to stretch things like this example very easily since it lends itself well to it. But this example works well with the attachment points. Another thing about the attachment points, they don't need to be visible to, in order to do this connection point. We use them for building, but when you give them off to a customer, you may create a scene that doesn't have the setting turned on in your show settings. You can turn that option off so they're not visible. So the user can still drag and drop these out and everything will work as intending, intended. So in this case, it's a little bit larger pipe. Notice there's no attachment points visible, but everything will still function as is. So drag and drop all your components the size and position inside of here. So hopefully this example gives you a real idea of how this can be used for some of your customers and also for demonstration purposes show the flexibility of IronCAD and how easy it is to build parts that can configure in size basically on drop. And if you have any questions feel free to contact me or the support team to help answer any questions that you have and happy selling.